Welcome to today's webinar, Digital Growth, Planning a Site Called Digital Optimization Project. During today's webinar, we're going to be covering the importance of setting goals, how personas and user journeys have a key part to play, how to test and optimize your website for growth, how to put in place a digital marketing framework to support your site called optimization plan. For a lot of marketers, we look at organizations like Google and Amazon, and um, we experience an element of digital envy um, at the types of experiences they were able to deliver for their own clients. Uh, organizations like Amazon are universally and rightly famous for their ability to, to mine data in order to understand that they are own customers' interests um, and drivers to deliver a richly personalized, tailored experience. And for a lot of marketers, the question is, how can we deliver a similar level of experience to our own customers without the obvious um, massive resources and personnel that the giants of digital experience are able to deploy for their own customers? And also, considering today's topic, um, an important question is, how can Sitecore help support the delivery of these type of richly relevant personalized experiences? So I've got a little bit of a cheeky picture on the screen it's a, of a Bugatti. Um, and obviously the question is, what does a Bugatti have in common with a website? And obviously for today's topic, what does it have in common with a Sitecore website? Um, I put the picture of the Bugatti up there because I was in Chelsea a couple of weeks ago and I, and I came across this car parked up and there was a crowd of people around it taking pictures. And it's an amazing looking car. And you know, just looking online, you can see why it's incredibly rare. Just from, from what I could find out about it, it's, it's a car with over a thousand horsepower, which is far more than my Fiesta, and it costs $1.3 million. It tops out 253 miles an hour, and apparently you can drive at that speed for, for 10 minutes before it runs out of fuel, not to 16, 2.55 miles. Um, so it's a very expensive, very rare, and very beautiful car. But like in the image on screen, um, it lacks a driver, I and mean, without a driver and a, and a map as well, it's unable to get you to where you want to go. So I suppose in, in context, in applying it to um, today's topic of a cycle optimization project, how, what does Bugatti have in common with um, a website and a cycle website is a cycle website is, is technology, um, but without that driver, without that person within your team or uh, driving it, um, optimizing it, uh, having a plan and a strategy in place to get your site from where you are now, where you want to be, and, and to deliver the journeys to your to your end users. It's 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 pretty static. So I've, I've talked briefly about what not not to my site is. We're going to go into a little bit more detail throughout the presentation, but I just wanted to cover what, in my opinion, uh, an optimized website looks like. Uh, and especially what an optimized website looks like in, in the context of site calls, digital marketing functionality. So just to say, in my opinion, an um, optimized website is one that delivers a dynamic, personalized experience that's relevant to each individual that takes into account what we know about them and aims to deliver an experience tailored based on their needs and interests. And look at it from the site call technology perspective. Um, we'll be covering some of these in, in today's webinar because a lot of these go into a cycle optimization project. Um, cycle allows you to um, create goals and engagement analytics and engagement value. And this allows you to then personalize based on people triggering goals. Do you have a robust campaign management, place, uh, campaign management process in place to manage your cycle optimization strategy and your digital marketing strategy? Um, cycle enables you to, um, out of the box, launch about 100 um, rules. And it's got a, a robust rules-based personalization. Um, an optimized website should involve A-B testing uh, because experience is out of the box. You know, once you deliver an experience to a client, it's, it's great to give you get some initial data, but how do we then test it to improve it over time? Um, profiling users. Are we able to profile individual segments so we can learn about what their interests are, what drives them, and then deliver the right type of content? That to be an optimized site. You know, how do we pull in advanced um, automation? It could be cycle automation, or it could be how do we integrate uh, other tools like um, Oracle, Eloqua, and then leverage that functionality. And how do we integrate into other systems to have a, uh, 
a richer repository of information that we could then surface and target our customers better. But optimization isn't a, just about technology, and I'm going to be saying that quite a few times today, so apologies in, in advance. I mean, the um, way we work with clients, the way we look at it, there's um, um, four strands that we see is strategies. Do you have the strategies in place to support your uh, cycle optimization plan? Do you have the, the right people? Do they have the right training? And have you planned for it properly? On screen, I've got an example of a um, cycle, um, or uh, the maturity model that Cycle uses quite often is the customer experience maturity model. And there's many maturity models out there. In, in essence, they, they, they aim to tell you um, the same thing. Um, they aim to say where you are as an organization, digitally speaking, and where would you like to be. Um, but the danger is, is to look at it as a, a left to right um, transition. And it's not as simple as starting off as initiator, moving your way up to, um, to a, becoming an engaged and lifetime customer. Um, the likelihood is that you'll be doing many elements that are class digital, uh, digitally mature throughout this process, such as automation and basic personalization. But in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, real digital maturity does not come from just doing a, a bit of automation here or there, but from taking a holistic view into how each channel can help support your digital and business and strategy and optimizing across the entire spectrum of digital channels. In, in essence, that's what the remainder of this webinar will, will aim to address. So where do we start? It's a, it's a good question, and it's one with regards to um, cycle and um, cycle marketing that flummoxes, flummoxes a, a lot of people. You know, where exactly do we start, and where should we start? First, some, some obvious barriers. Uh, before you begin a cycle optimization project, you want to run through some of these obvious barriers to save disappointment, but also make sure that you've got the um, foundations in place before you can start doing some of the more cooler, fun more interesting parts of um, um, digital marketing. So we have a quick run through on, on the checklist. Um, the first one we always run through with, with clients is as your uh, website being built to cycle best practice. The biggest challenge most cycle clients find when, when attempting something like, uh, for example, like personalization is that templates and components haven't been built to accommodate for it. If the whole page areas have been built as a single component, for example, in a way that deviates from best practice, there's a good chance you have lost the granularity of control of content on the page to enable to deploy personalization effectively. So you, the first step is always about understanding what is possible and what you've got. Have your systems been configured correctly? Not just your cycle systems, but have they been, um, if you have a third party systems like um, e-commerce tools or CRMs, has that inter integration been configured correctly? Have you defined a strategy to support your cycle digital plans? As I said earlier, um, Cycle is a technology, but on its own, it, it, it doesn't do anything. It requires, it requires people to input into it. It requires um, a digital team to have a, a set of plans to take advantage of the um, functionality within the platform. Has Google Analytics been set up correctly? Cycle has its own analytics, and it's, it's um, in Cycle 8. It's, it's much better than previous versions, but with a lot of clients, they will continue to use things like um, Google Analytics. So, have you got the correct tags on page on your pages? Are you able to extract the data that you need in order to make decisions to inform your uh, future marketing? Are you on a pre-Cycle 8 version of Cycle? Um, Cycle is um, on on-premise um, software. So therefore, that means that uh, a lot of clients are on different versions. And what does that mean? Well, that means that uh, if you're on a uh, 7.2, for example, as opposed to 7.8, you will have different views and levels of functionality. And it's important to take that into account. Um, therefore, because if um, uh, during this presentation I've become a lot of stuff in Cycle 8, if you're not on Cycle 8 and you're on Cycle 7.2, you're not going to have access to some of this functionality. That's not a problem. It's important to just know what you can achieve with the current version of Cycle. And does your team have the, the right skills and training in place? Do you have um, cross business support? And this is something we've actually been talking about quite quite a lot recently. We've been working with a client on their marketing and sales alignment, and for them, uh, traditional B two B organisation, the initial team's role really was to create value for the sales team, but there was a little bit of a disconnect. So. How do we identify what's important to sell and how do we line that back to marketing? So have you worked with your different functions to, to, to have that cross-business support? So what can you do with Cycle? Well, potentially an awful lot, which is a good thing, but actually also um, a problem for a lot of people because actually the fact that you can do so much makes it difficult to figure out what we should do. 
the way we look at it is, is to take a step back and abstract the technology from this entire conversation, um, to have a look at the way customers interact with uh, your company. Now, the way you, most um, customers interact with an organization is quite complex, and we live in a multi-touch point world. Um, and the challenge for most organizations is how do we um, map back those myriad touch points to your, um, your site, your digital strategies, and how do we identify which parts of those journeys are experiences delivering value for that client, and how do we optimize against that? I mean, the example I have on screen is a, is a model from Forrester. It's actually applicable to B2B, but obviously there's, there's many out there for, for B2C organizations as, as well. The important thing is, is, as an organization, do you use a model to define the entire customer journey? It, can, it doesn't have to be this complex. It can be as simple as complex as possible. But have you um, mapped out the customer journey from uh, initial touch point with the organization, that initial discovery, discovery phase, through to engagement, through to purchase, through to uh, ongoing um, um, advocacy of, of, your, of your brand, and therefore have you begun to map out against those sort of areas. But getting um, into the integrity, well, where would you begin with a cycle optimization project? Well, we, begin, we would always say identify priorities. And as with any type of digital project, it's important to identify what's important to the business in order to define what to optimize against. You hear me say quite often it's not about a technology and planning a cycle optimization project. A large part of the process is making sure your technical foundation is solid and planning a robust strategy which will serve to support your business objectives. And we'll go into that now. So how to define your priorities? Well, a couple of key things we always say is you know, analyze your data. You know, delve deep into your Google Analytics uh, data stores, look at your CRM data, look at any other um, area where you, you contain information which shows the value that customers are bringing to your organization. So have a look into that and identify where you currently derive in the most uh, value. So it could be you, you discover that elements of your site are not only just converting but also driving you know, a large percentage of your you know, revenue for your business, for example. So identify benchmark figures. For a lot of um, companies and a lot of marketers, you probably have these already, but it's important to have these figures with you when approaching a cycle optimization project because having these figures gives you a something um, to optimize against, but also gives you a starting block. So you know we've achieved X. Now what can we, how can we improve against that once we start rolling out more advanced functionality like personalization? Now, and what is important to the business? Is it about, uh, do you have a new product offering? Is there a new product you're launching? Are you trying to crack a new geography? Are you trying to break into uh, Southeast Asia, for example? It's important to know because we can then begin to tailor the site to then target um, what's important to the business, not just in the past, but also what's important to the business going forward. So stage two, know your visitors. If, a, if a, um, the definition of an optimized site is one which it takes into account the fact that you have multiple custom segments with um, you know, hundreds of individuals visiting your site, you know, possibly thousands of millions, with unique content requirements, knowing your visitors is important. Sitecall gives you the ability to deliver personalized relevant content to those individual visitors, um, but it needs to know them. And um, you need to tell the system who your, who your personas are, who your custom segments are, what content is relevant to. Knowing your visitors is, is where to start. Yeah. Have you built personas? I mean, most, most of you on, on, on the line today I'm sure you most probably have personas already built into your companies, you've probably codified it already, or you have a good understanding of who your clients are, you know, who they are, what, what their background is, what's their challenges, um, how can we help them as a customer, and obviously what we as a, an organization provide to help and meet and answer the challenges that our customers have. I mean, the goal of any site optimization project is to move your marketing towards a very targeted and segmented approach to marketing, so identifying who your customers are is obviously a key part of that. But obviously knowing your customers is, is just one, one part of the equation. Um, the ability to deliver a, a tailored experience to each in, in your individual visitors to your site is great, um, but the ability to deliver um, unique relevant content to the individual is um, resulting on the ability to have content to serve. Without having content which is relevant to an individual, don't, um, it's difficult to deliver a unique experience. Content creation, as a lot of companies know, is, is um, a time-consuming affair, but you post, most probably have an awful lot of content already. So 
have a look at mapping your existing content against your personas. The example I've got above is very simple. You can create one far more complex. The key thing is, is to define who your personas are and look at your content and apply it across a uh, customer journey. You can use different models. It doesn't have to be like the Forrester model, but you know, at that initial uh, discovery phase of your brand, what type of content do you have to interest that person who, who's only just discovered your brand? Um, do you have content that's relevant to, to an audience who have purchased a product and looking to engage with you further? Um, so map your content. Once you've mapped it, you begin to see gaps within your, your content marketing strategy. Then you can begin to say, okay, let's apply more resources to these different areas. And going into cycle, I mean, we're going to be going throughout this presentation. Obviously, there can be a mixture of stuff which happens outside of cycle and a lot of happens in them. And as I always say, it's it's not just about the technology. A lot of stuff needs to happen before you even approach um, the platform to get the best out of it. But the good thing about cycle is it's an ability to create personas within the platform. And this is probably one of the most complex areas of the platform to understand. Um, the difference between profile keys and profile cards, pattern cards and scoring mechanisms, there's quite a bit there. There's often a little bit of technical work needed as well to get it all working smoothly. I mean, often for us, when we work with clients, it takes between one to two days to understand their requirements and map that into, into the system. But at its essence, you have the ability within Sitecore to create your personas and then match those content um, stores that you have, which are relevant to your individual personas, and tag them to your personas. So you, you can then begin building that profile over time. The stage three, know your numbers. Knowing your numbers is obviously super important. Um, you need to know your conversion rates. You need to know what your conversion rates are, um, your existing numbers, in order to have that benchmark figure. So identify your conversion rates. Um, as we said earlier, when, when um, uh, trying to identify priorities, you would have looked into your, for example, your Google Analytics um, data stores, into your um, reports, and you may discover um, areas of the site which are converting well. You might define that um, returning visitors is super important. You may see that um, conversions from mobile devices are greater than desktop. You may see you get better conversions from uh, certain European countries. So codify it, put it into, into a document. Um, it will begin to enable you to then optimize against the journey. Then we can put together um, a, a benchmark figure. So this is your current conversion rate. What do we want to increase it by? Half percent, one percent. It doesn't matter initially. It's, it's a high hypothesis because later on we can then begin deploying personalization and A-B testing in order to improve that experience so we can begin to increase those conversion rates up. So stage three, create goals. And by creating goals, I mean specifically cycle goals. If you're familiar with creating goals in Google Analytics, then you're not going to have a problem with adjusting to what a cycle goal is. So a cycle goal, for those of you who have only come across it for the first time today, um, it's also really known as, in the cycle world, as engagement value. So it allows a marketer to basically set up goals against areas of the site um, where they are deriving value. So an example could be assigning a goal against your newsletter sign-up form. So you may, discuss, you, may, you may, throughout this process, say actually getting people to sign up for the newsletter is an um, enormous form of value for us, so let's assign a goal to that. So the other way to look at it is you should aim to assign goals to areas of your website that you wish to optimize against. Um, for those of you who are not sure how to create goals, goals can be accessed from um, the marketing control panel in um, Cycle version 8 or the marketing center in older versions. But the, the good thing about creating goals within Cycle is, is the ability to then personalize based on people triggering. At the example above, we have a um, hierarchical approach. So when looking at an optimizing, optimization project, you should sit down with your team and actually wider teams and try to identify where on your website you're deriving value. And, and that's not perhaps um, looking at just page views. It's looking at what are the actions which happen on your site um, that are important to push in a customer from uh, an unengaged customer to one where it's uh, valuable to the business. And that could be you know, starting from you know, the lower end of the scale, you know, viewing videos, downloading white papers, sign up for newsletters, instant sales chats, if you're an e-commerce brand, you know, um, are they the final, um, the most valuable thing could be purchasing an item or requesting a demo. The key thing is, is to identify those and then begin to codify it. 
because once we've done that, we can begin creating goals in Cycle. As I said, you can access this from the marketing control panel, but basically you can then go into Cycle and then begin to apply your own goals. But there are different ways to apply goals within Cycle. You can apply them at a content level, um, at, to, at a page level, you can programmatically apply them, uh, you can apply them to a link and many other places. But I suppose if you're comparing them to Google um, Analytics goals, the way to look at it is like this. Um, if you create one in Cycle and in Google, it gives you the ability to um, measure the success of something to see what worked. The difference with Cycle is um, it enables you to then change the experience afterwards. So not only do we know what happened, what worked well, what also what didn't, but also we can then apply, for example, a personalization rule to a goal. So if someone triggers this, okay, let's deliver them a slightly different experience. And over time, you get more complex when you're profiling personas and your different personas are triggering goals. You can deliver different content to different personas that trigger the same goal. So stage four, optimizing user journeys. I, I know it feels like it's been a, kind of a lot of work um, and we haven't even really gone it deep into launching some of the cool stuff in optimization project, but it's all been about laying the foundations. It's what's going to allow you to begin optimizing the digital experience. The danger of any optimization project uh, is to be perhaps overcome by the potential size of the challenge. You thought, you know, God, there's, there's an awful lot we could be doing. Um, you probably have hundreds of pages, thousands of content items, and it can at first seem a challenge to figure out what to begin optimizing against. My advice is always, um, don't be too clever, and start small, pick one user journey, and begin optimizing against that one journey. So, you know, example user journeys. And it, by this point, it'd be relatively simple because you would have looked into your um, analytics before to discover where you're deriving value at the moment. And this will probably help you define what user journeys you want to optimize. You're probably going to want to optimize the journeys which are creating the most value. You know, as I said earlier, um, is it about um, optimizing uh, returning visits? You know, do we want to um, uh, lower basket dropout? You know, form abandonment rate. Managing journeys on multiple websites. Um, give you an example in the site core world. That could be you could have your main cycle website and you could have another website on another platform, WordPress for example. You know, how do we then manage that? With, with Cycle, perhaps you could put like a federated experience manager, begin surfacing personalized content on non-cycle websites. So that could be a journey you want to optimize. Um, how do we increase engagement? You know, how do we optimize paid traffic? An example I'm gonna go through now with a, with a client we're working with is exactly that, the optimizing paid traffic. Um, we've noticed recently that we've started getting an awful lot more demand for um, um, digital campaign support, whereas previously with site called you perhaps look at it as a website project. Um, a lot of marketing departments now, it's not just about the website. I mean, that's just part of what you do. It's part of how you engage your clients. But with a lot of marketers, it's what marketing campaigns are we launching? What digital campaigns? And a lot of what we, we do as a, an organization here, here at Ratio is, you know, how do we get the best out site called support your digital marketing campaigns? So with this example we're going to run through, you know, optimizing paid traffic. Um, um, the British Heart Foundation, obviously, is a, is a very large um, UK charity. They wanted to raise awareness of their Southern, Southern Devastation campaign and, and the life-saving research, which they um, spend a is the main focus of their organization. You know, as part of the campaign, we wanted to run a very targeted localized brand campaign uh, to promote that life saving research. Uh, we wanted to see how that campaign would increase the propensity for uh, visitors to support um, the charity. And, we, and this campaign was being run through multiple channels, display advertising, social, um, Facebook, YouTube, etc. And we wanted to see how we could surface um, specific content to this incoming um, traffic stream. So to recognize the fact that um, British Heart Foundation has multiple custom segments and to recognize they have different content requirements. Again, this is part of a, um, a small, small test. So we're targeting specifically the Midlands campaign so we get some baseline figures uh, and then that will inform um, future decisions and also larger campaigns. So when you're looking at optimize, picking a, a journey to optimize, don't think you have to optimize the entire journey. You could perhaps optimize um, just 10% of the traffic of that journey and then use that data as a test to then improve before rolling out to a larger segment. So our approach. Well, the way we approached it was we wanted to create relevant and trackable journeys for this campaign. 
So we worked with the British Heart Foundation to assess you know, what, what is important um, to the business. You know, what did you really want to achieve from this campaign? Um, what, do you, how do you define success, a successful campaign? Or what do you want to see at the end of it? You know, target audiences. So it's important to define for this campaign which customers we were talking to, which segments, uh, which profiles did they match? You know, and we're looking at their, their, those, those profiles and personas' existing behaviour, and also how we wanted that behaviour to change. Again, I said at the beginning of the presentation, uh, it's important to look at um, existing templates and components. And again, we do the same here. So what can we achieve with the current um, system? Um, and what can we get to do to get the best out of it? It's not a case of, you know, let's, let's build out a roadmap for the future. You know, with a targeted campaign that's time um, sensitive, it's about figuring out what can we do today and rolling out something quickly. We also we approached this, we wanted to personalize the onward journey for users arriving from this campaign. So we didn't just want someone to come in from a campaign and then stop. We wanted to recognize that they were going to go on a journey and then personalize the content onwards. And obviously we wanted to track the value. Obviously as, as, a, as a, an optimization campaign, you want to, uh, we wanted to see what value was deriving from each of these channels. And as testing is, is super important, we also applied testing to these landing pages as well. We also wanted to uh, get better at using data, so we wanted to um, uh, understand um, the conversion rates, the engagement rates from these individual um, channels, so that we can better target audiences with the relevant content. So, how do we do this? Well, for this campaign, we suggested some, some goals that we might, might want to drive a user to. For example, clicking through to research, coping with the loss of a loved one, get, how to get involved with um, the British Heart Foundation's um, fund, um, um, funding uh, and research. We also wanted to measure how users were clicking through to each goal. Whilst we didn't apply a scaled score to the goals for this project, we just assigned one point to each on the assumption that all goals had the equivalent value for this campaign. Therefore, the value of each user session equates to the number of goals user triggered. We also wanted to track each refer in channel to enable us to attribute user behavior back to the source so that if a particular channel was creating different user behavior or value then we can track this back we did this by creating campaign codes for each source as you can see here each campaign is a unique code which we can use for not only tracking but also um, serving up personalized content in this case we wanted to show um, we didn't want to show the same um, content to everyone but track it uniquely and serve different content based on which inbound campaign they're coming from. We then set up personalization rules on key pages of the site where users were triggering these campaign codes. So the example in front of you, this is the, uh, the default page at the time, so this is the um, content that um, all visitors of the site would, would, would receive, and obviously as part of the campaign, we wanted to the change that we wanted to serve up um, um, unique content based on that specific individual. So this is just an example. We, we did there's multiple versions of this, but this is just the way we then surfaced up a different home page uh, based on that incoming traffic stream. And you know, depending on the six, seven, or eight different campaigns that were running at the time, they would have been served different uh, images and different content as well. And whilst I can't show you the live analytics for the session, uh, we will be monitoring how uh, each campaign channel is performing using Cycles Analytics Engine, looking at not only how visit, visits and um, what value, but also the top goals triggered from each source. This will help us to re refine the approach for the nationwide campaign, as well as looking at other elements such as optimizing the donation journal. So stage five, testing. We've run through, quite a, uh, we've run through an example of, of um, how you can optimize a journey. Um, to increase conversions, but now, and uh, if you're applying this to your own site optimization project, once you've deployed some personalization, some optimization, you will want to begin testing. So what you, should you test against? Well, by this point, it'd be relatively simple because you've defined your user journeys, you've defined what um, areas of your site are creating value, and so the answer is, is that you want to test those specific areas. So if it was basket dropout, you know, is that specific um, customer journey? Okay, let's let's um, let's A/B test different um, forms. Um, can we do increase the engagement um, rate of our site? Um, an interesting one is personalization rules. Um, it's much easier in Cycle Eight. You have the ability to um, test 
um, multiple variations, multiple rules. Um, so you could then begin to see how two different um, sets of personalized content are performing. And cycle experience optimization. Um, the version I have in front of me is from Cycle 8. This is the, the latest version. If you're on an earlier version of Cycle, you're going to probably have um, a different view and also different functionality. Um, for example, on the latest version, you, you have a, a, a more granularity of control when you A-B test in pages. You can test not just um, version A, version B of a page. You can test individual components. So you can test you know, a form as well as a, um, a banner. With the older versions, you're probably just going to be testing just a, a complete page, a page A versus page B. Well, that brings us to the end of the presentation. We're just going to, we've got time now for some questions. I'll just hand it over to Steve. Great. Thank you very much for that, Mario. Um, had a couple of questions uh, come in. Um, first on was from Alex asking, uh, I think going back to your earlier point, can you test how personalization is performing? Good question, what we get quite often. Um, so yes, yes. Um, so Cycle introduced personalization testing with Cycle 8, which is great, but it's still a little bit constrained in terms of the results um, um, and the data it gives you. It requires cycle goals and engagement value that, that I spoke about earlier to be set up. But prior to cycle eight, there isn't any real way to test personalization. The alternative is to switch on one personalized element at a time and measure the effect on your desired goal through something like Google Analytics. Great, thanks for that. Uh, had a question here from Maria as well, asking about scale. So how do you personalize uh, at scale, which I imagine is uh, something, something we've been asked about twice, but um, I'll, I'll leave you to answer that one, Mario. Yeah, yeah, good, good question. Um, yeah, it's tricky. Um, yes, we have been asked this a couple of times. Um, we do recommend you don't try to go all out in the early stages because it, it will require significant planning. Let's say, for example, you're, you're a bank. You might say, I want to profile all my mortgage content with a mortgage buyer profile card. However, in reality, a lot of that content will also potentially be useful to other audience, uh, audiences and interest types as well. So you need to audit it and map it against your personas. As you can imagine, scaling that across hundreds of content items can be incredibly time consuming. Therefore, you need to build this into your content editing process. You can retrospectively tag profile cards or content, but we recommend you talk to us if that's what you're planning to do, as there's a few different ways to achieve this. Great, thank you. Um, had one from uh, Steve. Uh, should we use psychoanalytics or Google Analytics? Um, yeah, the classic question. Um, so prior to Psycho8, I wouldn't have personally um, I wouldn't personally use the analytics engine in Cycle. It was very basic and shallow in terms of data it gives you. But in Cycle 8, things have improved. And you now have a richer dashboard. However, in our experience, it's still a bit too limited in the breadth of data you can access. We're talking to one client about custom extracting data into a business intelligence tool, such as Tableau, to make data really useful for them. But I think the reality is that, that for most clients, um, they'll still be using Google Analytics for quite some time to come. Thank you. Um, and we've got one final one from Liam who's asked, uh, why would you use Sitecore rather than a dedicated optimization or personalization tool? Um, yeah, it's a good question. And, and I know there's, there's, there's different tools out there. I mean, um, we work with clients who use um, tools like um, Optimizely, we run um, an A-B test, etc. I suppose the the advantage from using Cycle rather than a dedicated optimization tool is that it's built within the system. You have not just the ability to then test, but then you have the ability to then um, deploy a different experience based on that test across the site. You also have one single store of data. It's not quite a single view of the customer. I think that's um, uh, it's something we hear quite often when people talk about Cycle. You're probably not going to have a single view of a customer with Cycle, probably because you're using other systems like other CRM systems, other e-commerce tools. But for us, it's the ability to then uh, deploy uh, off the back of that. 
Great. Thank you very much, Mario. Um, we haven't got any more questions, but if anyone does want to ask anything after this session, um, our details are on the screen. Um, just to wrap up as well, we are running uh, an event which goes into a lot of these themes uh, in a bit more detail. It's a half-day event in London on the 7th of June. Um, the website URLs on the screen. Uh, if you would like to attend, please do go along, have a look at the agenda. We've got some good speakers for this one, um, and uh, sign up. Then we've got a few tickets remaining for that event. Um, so just remains for me to say thank you very much to everyone for attending. Um, obviously, thank you, Mario, for presenting. And uh, as I say, please do contact us if you uh, would like to any help to uh, to deliver this kind of project.